Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So I wanted to jump back in here and take a look at the experimental pure EV portfolio because I did notice something pretty interesting just kind of running through some of the stats here. It has been a while since we've kind of updated some of the stats on here. So I want to show you that too, show you kind of our progression, how the portfolio is doing, and then also show you a little bit of uh, some interesting stats and data that I kind of figured out kind of analyzing some of these positions. So just as a quick recap on this portfolio, you can go back a couple of videos and watch kind of how as we built out this idea, this concept, but I purely want to build a trading portfolio or a series of bots that just trades positive EV. That's it. So high probability, positive EV. And we built out a series of bots that trades both ETFs and stocks. And so we're going to look at kind of the performance of these two different major subsets, ETFs and then stocks. So right now, the total portfolio still doing pretty well, had a little bit of uh, positions that it kind of went through between September 21st and September 22nd through expiration, which is kind of to be expected. And actually, if you look at this here, you can see that, let me just get that out of here before I show this, but you can see that basically the portfolio goes through this period of, I guess you could say it's kind of cleansing on some of these bigger positions that go through these monthly expirations which is to be expected ultimately, and we would expect this moving forward. So the portfolio builds and builds and builds, and it starts taking profits on lots of positions. And then once it gets to these major expiration periods, like a monthly expiration period for these positions that are still lingering in that monthly expiration period, it might end up kind of cleansing the portfolio a little bit and removing those positions. Right now, as far as open positions go, we still have a positive P&L on open positions, but it's not yet reflected here. So this graph should be higher once some of these positions hopefully close and are in the right zone. Right now, we've done about 836 positions in this pure EV portfolio. Win rate's still pretty good. Profit factor still pretty good. Return on risk still pretty good. We're still holding positions um, about four days. This is maybe extended just a little bit because we're moving out just a little bit further, uh, but averaging still about five days to entry here, roughly. Again, we're doing this on purpose to get a lot of occurrences, a lot of data built in here um, for this portfolio. What I do think is interesting before we kind of get to the split and the divide between ETFs and stocks is I do think that it's interesting. And if you've noticed on this, if you're trading it alongside of me, I know a lot of people are, what I did notice in the last couple of weeks is that as the market was really kind of hitting like a crest in equities and large cap and even like NASDAQ and small caps, you started to see the portfolio shift dramatically to selling short call spreads. Now, this was not a shift that I put in here. We built out these bots, if you go back to the original videos, to not care directionally. We didn't say that it had to do the short put spreads or short call spreads or iron condors. We just said the best opportunity that fits our criteria ranked by alpha. So the best essentially like risk adjusted EV is what we wanted to get into. And for quite some time, and if you go back to the other videos, we almost didn't do that many short call spread positions at all. In fact, the majority of positions were iron condor positions. But just in the last two and a half weeks or so, three weeks, it's really adjusted really heavily and aggressively to those short call spread positions. And at first I was looking at this going, man, this is not going to be good because some of those positions were losing at the time. The P&Ls were dropping. It didn't look like good positions with the market running up, especially in some of the oil and uh, natural gas and stuff like that. But ultimately it ended up being the best risk adjusted positions for the time uh, because the market obviously had a little bit of a down move. And so I don't know, I, for whatever that's worth, I think it's very interesting to see. I don't think it's going to happen that way all the time. I don't think it's necessarily that it's predicting market shifting, but you could see a very uh, different shift in the types of positions that we were finding with the alpha ranking for positions that it was leaning more away from iron condors now and more towards short call spreads. So I'll be curious to see as we go through this, if that happens in the opposite direction, do we get a point at which it starts leaning more towards short put spreads? Um, if the market continues to be oversold or gets more oversold, then does it lean that way and start entering positions? So I thought that was really interesting. It's kind of shifting and evolving with the markets. Um, and that's what we ultimately care about. We, we don't really care to get the direction perfectly right as long as we can generate positions that make money, right? All right, so here's what I did want to do, though. I wanted to take a look at, and I've already done this before, but you can do this inside of your uh, analyze tab as well. Once you pull up a strategy or a set of symbols or a bot or whatever, you can include or exclude different symbols. And it's a really easy way to kind of go back and forth between looking at the performance of, say, a certain group of symbols like ETFs versus stocks. So 
What I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at all the ETFs. So I'm just going to go through here and select the ETFs really quickly um, for all of the positions. This would include all bots that are trading any of these ETF positions. I think I got them all here. Let me just make sure. Yep, there we go. So these are all the ETFs that we're trading. So again, remember we spun up individual bots for individual tickers. So we'll just put those in here. It also shows you um, the count of positions in there. So you can see that. And so now we've basically taken the data set and said, okay, of all the positions that the EV portfolio has done, just look at ETFs. So here's the data on ETFs. And so I'll go through this with you guys so you can see it together. It hasn't been as good. If you actually see the, the total P&L here, you can see that of all the positions, and it's still about half of the positions were done in ETFs, still have a pretty good win rate, still positive on the P&L for those positions, but it hasn't been as consistent as say, I would assume the stock positions are gonna be when we start looking at those. Profit factor for these, a little bit lower for sure, definitely around the push, kind of risking a dollar to make a dollar, a little bit over a dollar here, so it's not too bad. Um, but these positions, they, they just didn't do as well. Um, the distribution of positions by strategy type was pretty pretty crazy. We had a lot of, of iron condor positions, so a good bulk of them were 252 positions were iron condors, and those are mostly a push. So we had you know about $112 in profit on that end. You had 154 positions that are short calls that kind of saved the portfolio, if you will. Short put spreads didn't have a lot of positions that were short put spreads, so risk adjusted, alpha wise, they weren't good positions to get into. So you didn't even see a lot of them to begin with. Maybe that helped the portfolio. Maybe it helped them not get into positions they shouldn't have got into. Uh, but you can see there's a big disparity here in which symbols actually won and which symbols lost, which is ultimately why you should be trading a diversified portfolio anyway. This is literally the poster child here if you wanna use a graph of why you should be trading a large set of ETFs or ticker symbols if you want to, because there's no way you could have possibly just randomly guessed which ones would have been really good and really bad. So if you only trade QQQ, you look like a rock star. If you only trade XOP, you look like an idiot. If you trade FXI and QQQ, you look like a super rock star. If you traded SPY and, S and XOP in this series of time right now, then you look like an idiot. So this is why you have to trade that diversified set, because this could clearly switch back the opposite direction very quickly. In fact, it'll be interesting to see later on when we come back and kind of review the performance again after more trades, where this kind of shifts in, in the balance here. So you start to see these particular symbols do really well. Uh, these ones were really tough. XOP was a really tough one because it just had a lot of volatility. So oil and gas and all that stuff had so much volatility over the last couple of months. Um, that was just a really hard one to trade, obviously, and you can see it's reflected here in the positions. All right, so let's switch it over and now look at just the stock symbols. So all I'm gonna do here just to look at the stock symbols is I'm gonna switch the tag here for include to exclude these symbols. So I don't have to re-tag or reselect everything, I just exclude all these symbols. And now, essentially I'm saying strip out all of the ETF positions, only look at the stock positions. Now stock positions did exceptionally well. So all of the essential P&L for this portfolio has come from mostly stock positions. Lots and lots of positions here too. So again, about half of those positions came from here, high win rate, profit factor is much better. I think essentially just the risk adjusted returns on stocks ended up being a lot better for these positions. You still had a big disparity here in the number of positions that you had for uh, all of these. So short put spreads, you only had 57 positions. So most of it was tilted towards iron condors and then recently a lot more short call spreads. Very interesting here. And again, you still had um, a big you know, shift in P&Ls for different ticker symbols, uh, Roku being the worst one here. Although Tesla and NVIDIA were much worse, I think, in earlier videos and have kind of come back around. So it's been really interesting. Microsoft continues to be the, the far and away leader here, along with JP Morgan, Netflix, uh, Capital One, Meta, et cetera. So it's good. Again, you wanna trade that diversified set of ticker symbols. We have a lot more symbols here that we traded, so that also potentially gave us a better opportunity to capture some of those positions that just ended up working out a little bit better. Had we, for example, cut it off at this many symbols here, and maybe for whatever reason we didn't trade Microsoft or JP Morgan or Netflix or you know Capital One, we might not have seen the really outperformance of the portfolio. So I think that this is very telling in that 
what we did here is we tried a lot of symbols. We let the numbers and math and probabilities work. Some worked out great, some worked out really bad. Um, but ultimately, the net net return was was pretty good on this on this uh, subset of positions. So again, this is the total portfolio here uh, shown here. I think it's very interesting, and I'll just make one more comment before I wrap this one up. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. By the way, if you do, let me know in the comments. One more thing is we didn't do anything to avoid the recent Fed meeting. So if you remember, we're not avoiding Fed meetings. We're avoiding earnings and dividends. That's pretty normal. But a lot of people have commented or posted in the community or emailed in saying that they turned off their strategies, turned off their positions during Fed meeting. Uh, we did not do that. We let the portfolio trade through that as it normally would, no adjustments. If it hit our targets, great. If it didn't hit our targets, great. Just keep going. And it worked out pretty well. I think the Fed meeting, like during that time period, overall, the portfolio did pretty well during that time period, which means that you don't have to be so afraid of these market environments. Yes, you should take them seriously. Yes, you should make sure you're not over you know, position sized. You don't have too much allocation on all those normal things that you should do anyway in trading. But you shouldn't avoid these market opportunities because they might actually be good opportunities to trade. Second thing that I'll note here is that again, and I think about this on the mental side, I did not have to mentally go through 200 losing trades. I don't know about you all, but I know for sure, for me, mentally going through losing trades impacts me. Like if I go through a series of even five or 10 or 15 trades, I would immediately start questioning what I'm doing. But if I can remove myself emotionally from what I'm doing here and use bots and automations to run a strategy that I know has a statistical edge with EV, then I can, again, remove myself from that process, let the process run, and I can be at a higher level of management for my portfolio. And so this was really key for me. This is one number that I constantly watch when I analyze positions is how many losses did I go through? I went through 200 losing trades. I personally could have never like realistically stomach that without making adjustments. I haven't made any adjustments to this since we started this and made any adjustments we did in the earlier videos to it, but no adjustments since then, no manual trades since then. I haven't manually removed positions, manually entered extra positions, overridden positions, nothing. Just let the portfolio go. And that's a really telling one here is that I've removed myself from it in the, so the fact that I could have gone through a series of big losing trades, but I didn't because I'm not actually physically doing the trading process here. So I think it's really important for a trader to do that because then you, again, remove yourself, you take yourself to a higher observing level of management of your portfolio, which I think is helpful. So anyways, hopefully you guys all enjoy this. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like this video, please thumb up the video, upvote it, uh, share it with your friends. Let me know what other videos you want me to do. I'm getting to the point now, we're now with 800 trades. We're gonna start looking at how we can start converting this thing over into a live portfolio. So. A little bit more testing, a little bit more environments to go through, but we've got a lot of data now. That's what we want. We've been doing a lot of back testing data on EVs anyway that we've been publishing on the blog. So we're getting to the point now where we can start feeling more comfortable, or I'm starting to feel more comfortable putting this thing out live and starting to think through how we might do that and what adjustments we might make. As always, I'll go through that process with you all here on YouTube so you guys can see that process uh, as I go through. Until next time, happy trading.